It could be seen as another tale of David versus Goliath, but when the latter involves a massive building overlooking some small houses in a bedroom community in Scarborough, the fight could be seen as a little unfair, especially when this sort of thing has impact on other potential developments in the city. It was one year ago when Janine Reno and her family purchased their dream home in Scarborough's Birchcliff community. That's the building that's going to be demolished right there. Not knowing of the massive plans already in the works, just steps away. There was a development that was going in directly next door, and I kept zooming in to try and see if it was actually literally next door, and the floor fell out of our world. We were completely devastated and blindsided. A 12-story building slated for an entire block along Kingston Road was already being debated with neighbours and City Hall, including two homes on a residential street already sold. They had stepped into a battle with all tree developments asking for too much, lawn signs claiming encroachment and bad planning, along with a website. We're totally pro-development, um, but we want development along avenues where it was meant to be. And, you know, we want reasonable development. We don't need massive, you know, we want six stories. Um, you, you know, we want things that are, uh, that are reasonable for the area. While Kingston Road has seen other buildings and more housing being created in other areas, some are seen as reasonable along a main artery, while others, like one example in nearby Cliffside Village, towers over the area unlike anything before. Not much different from what's being proposed in this case with 265 condos that would be replacing low-rise rental apartments, also displacing those who have lived there for years. It's not very cheap to find the permits anymore, you know what I mean? It's like, a, I don't know. I don't know what the situation will be. It's, uh, just have to wait and see. Community meetings with city planners and the developers have had hundreds take part, trying to negotiate something smaller, but to no avail. You always have three partners. You have the developer, you have the city or city planning, and you have the community. They really don't want to have that conversation with my office, with the community. Uh, they'd rather take the chances at a, a different level, which is the appeal process through LPAT. So that's where we're at right now. Meaning the community is left to wonder and wait, having made their case. That also includes impacts on a nearby school and needed infrastructure. I think we have to be hopeful because there's so much at stake. And unfortunately, you know, the developer has taken the adversarial steps to, you know, say the clock's run out, 120 days has been met. The matter is now before the local planning appeal tribunal, a provincial body, as well as the city's planning department to determine whether or not it's worth continuing the fight. The local neighborhood has also hired its own planner to continue to defend its own interests. Mark McAllister, City News.